Dental pins are small threaded pieces of metal that are inserted into a tooth to help hold in a dental filling. Dental pins were used in teeth that had not been root canaled. In root canal teeth, dental posts are used to help hold in the cord buildup. I'll talk about dental posts in another video. The first step in placing a dental pin is placing a small pilot hole in the spot where you want the pin to go. This pilot hole is drilled with a small round burr in a slow speed handpiece and it is used to keep the pin drill from moving around when it's in use. It's similar to how when you drill a hole in a piece of metal. If you just try to drill a hole, the tip of the drill bit tends to move around. If you first place a dimple in the metal in the spot where you want the hole to be, then the tip of the drill will stay in place. Next, I use the correct size drill for the size dental pin I want to place. These are self-threading pins, so the hole needs to be a little bit smaller than the diameter of the pin. Luckily, the drills are matched with the pins so that the hole will be the right size. That way, the pin can lock itself into the tooth without needing any cement. When drilling the hole for the pin, I have to pay attention to where I'm drilling the hole and the angle of the drill. I don't want to place the hole too close to the center of the tooth since I might drill into the nerve space of the tooth, which could lead to a root canal. I also don't want to place the hole too close to the side of the tooth. If you, pay, if you place the pin too close to the side of the tooth, you could shear off part of the tooth, which would leave me with a bigger problem to repair. So I find a spot in the middle and place the pilot hole first. Then, I place the drill in the pilot hole and hold it at the proper angle. Again, I don't want to angle it at the nerve space of the tooth and I don't want to angle it towards the side of the tooth, which could lead to the drill hole coming out the side of the tooth. So I pick an angle that is down the root of the tooth and I drill my hole. I don't have to worry about going too deep because the drill has a built-in drill stop that prevents me from drilling too deep into the tooth. One thing I have to be careful of is to only run the drill once to drill the hole. I don't want to pump the drill up and down or wiggle it from side to side because then the hole will be too big and the pin won't self-thread into it. Great! I have the hole drilled in the right spot and nothing bad has happened. Next step is to place the pin. The pins I use are made by Coltine Whale Dent. They are gold pressed, gold plated stainless steel and come on a carrier that I use in my slow speed drill. Each carrier has two pins attached to it and the pin will shear off the carrier once it hits the bottom of the hole I drilled. I can use my drill at its normal slow speed which is around 20,000 RPM. The pin manufacturer recommends that the pins be placed at a slower speed so, my dent so for my dental drill I use a torque multiplier which slows the drill down to about 5,000 RPM. I can then place the pin into the tooth. Once the pin is in place, sometimes I give it a, a little tweak with a bending instrument to make sure that the top of the pin will be inside the filling material that I place over top of the pin. Now I can place a filling and the dental pin will hold it in place. So you're probably thinking, okay, that's all mildly interesting. Why wouldn't you just bond in a filling instead of using a dental pin? Well, there was a point in time that dental bonding wasn't very mainstream and the filling material of choice for back teeth was silver amalgam. Silver amalgam fillings don't stick to tooth structure. They're held in place by undercuts. Basically, the cavity prep is shaped in such a way so that the hole on the surface of the tooth is smaller than the rest of the cavity prep so that the filling material can't physically fall out of the tooth. But in certain situations, such as when a cusp breaks off, there may be not enough tooth structure left to hold the filling in. Now, normally when a cusp breaks off, a crown is the best choice to restore the tooth. But crowns are expensive and the patient may not be able to afford a crown at that point in time. In those situations, dentists would place large silver amalgam fillings and use pins to help hold the filling in place. Sometimes they would use more than one pin to hold the filling in place. Dental pins aren't used very much anymore nowadays. Now, with dental bonding, composite fillings don't need them to stay in place. Does anyone watching have a dental pin in one of their teeth? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.